So you've come here for the truth. Well, we've got the truth and nothing but the truth. Here are your hosts, Robert A. Bianchi and David J. Bruno. Welcome to WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth with your host Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. It airs on the radio every Saturday at our new time at 9.30, which is a primo choice. And by the way, we're in a different location right now because eventually this gets converted into a podcast where you can actually have the audio and the video, not to mention you can join live now, Dave. Explain to our audience all the ways they can get us. Oh, absolutely. Well, really, the other studio is being upgraded. We got some exciting new additions coming to our other studio where we normally record. And today we're in the second studio. This is where we do our TV appearances when we're in the office and court appearances as well. So I hope you guys like this. So uh, Dave, you know, listen, um, we've been doing a number of episodes on Nothing But The Truth and we really love this format um, because it's about about resiliency and it's about uh, people that have done a great job and been very successful in their lives and, and about mindset, right? We talk about this all the time and wellness. And as you know, and I think this is kind of interesting, we're going to do a show with ourselves this week um, because uh, I think it's important that we emphasize the things that it is that we've been doing since 2013. We got trained by Dr. Brene Brown back in 2014. We've been given the Joyful Journey lectures. This is becoming a, a, a space that a lot of people are in recognizing now, but we've recognized a long time ago, the importance of mindset. So in addition to what we're doing on Nothing But The Truth, which is a show about mindset, you've been recently asked to be on the Wellness Committee. If you can just talk to us a little bit about that, because Finally, finally, the courts are starting to recognize the importance of lawyers are people too. Reminds me of uh, there used to be an old show called uh, Wonderama. It's a, uh, kids are people too. Wakadu, wakadu, wakadu for you old people that are out there. Well, lawyers are people too. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. And, and we're very honored. I'm very proud of you that you're actually on that panel. It's going to make such a difference to people that need help. Sure. I mean, this really started from really what we've been doing recently. We're on this excellent app called Growth Day. And uh, it's audio, it's positive audio from Brendan Burchard every morning. And what I started to do, Bob, is I started to reflect on these morning uh, audios. And I, I started to think about how this affects attorneys, especially attorneys that are dealing with clients in crisis, right? Because it's one thing because everyone's got their own issues in their own lives. But as attorneys, we have to represent the interests of others. And especially when people are going through crisis, they have their own stress and overwhelm and anxiety. So as attorneys, you have to deal with your own, and then you're also dealing with your clients. So I started to write about this pretty regularly in my journal. And then I said, you know what? I really want to participate. I want to do more. Where are the initiatives? And I started to Google, and I saw that the State Bar Association had a wellness attorney wellness committee. And the judiciary is also uh, doing a number of things in this space too. So I reached out and I, and I applied for the committee in the State Bar Association and I was uh, accepted to that. And then just today, I just got off a of Zoom with uh, the judiciary and Judge Grant and 11 other attorneys dialoguing about how we deal with attorney wellness. And when somebody's going through a mental health or addiction issue, what does an attorney do to raise their hand and get help? And really, not a lot of resources were out there about this. And it's an initiative of the New Jersey judiciary and a lot of other states going around. So, yeah, we've been really talking about this a lot on the show. We've been putting it into practice with our routines and our habits and our journaling and the growth they app and things like that. So it's just really exciting because I feel like It's all really coming together in the practice of law. And we have this thriving law practice at the Bianchi Law Group where we're up to seven attorneys. We just had our seventh, Paul DeLella. And and also thinking about wellness and helping others and putting out information and joining these organizations is something that we've already been doing, especially you, Bob, being the Morris County prosecutor and some of the things you dealt with there. 
Yeah, it's it's. Um, I love it because you're right, Dave. And and that was something that I thought was so important when I was the county prosecutor was try to talk about mindset. We did a lot of that. We actually got the. I know that the lawyers probably thought I was crazy, but I got the lawyers together about how mindset can make a difference not only in their personal lives but in their ability to be able to do the job they do. And a lot of that has to. You know, there's a lot to that. There's a lot of texture in what it is that we do as lawyers. And then we've given the joyful journey courses. And what's really amazing to me about your role now with the, with the judiciary doing this is I. I remember, you remember, back in 2013, when I was given the Joyful Journey lectures, I went to the Bar Association and I asked, uh, which is run essentially, you know, the Supreme Court is obviously intimately involved with the Bar Associations, but um, that we needed to do something like this and to give the course and, and they weren't interested. And I wound up giving the uh, course to a number of other bar associations across the country when I got called by Jersey maybe two or three years later saying, how come you're not doing that here? Um, and wound up giving one. And it, it was kind of like a slow process, but it's good that we got here nevertheless. But here's the issue, and I'm, I'm curious. What I've seen in my career, whether you're a police officer, um, you know, or an attorney, is there are a lot of attorneys who are suffering like anybody else with mental health and addiction issues. And the problem is, as a society, I have found that we say we want to address these things and we want to give people a platform to better themselves and to therefore better the services they provide to clients. But yet people are afraid to do that because they feel that it's going to be in their background that people will use it against them. And for a lawyer, I could see people being afraid to do it because if something goes wrong and they're sued for malpractice or ineffective assistance of counsel, somebody can say, ah, you see, because they had a mental health issue and I should have been told that. So I, this is something I know you guys are gonna be wrestling with. Any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. It was really the, one of the main things that we were talking about today is confidentiality and also how does it affect the practice moving forward? When you raise your hand, and you say, I need help, and you go to the assignment judge, because right now this is, this is what's being discussed, is basically uh, of submission to the assignment judge, saying, judge, I have a problem, I need help. And under that, kit, under that situation, the assignment judge would decide whether or not there could be a pause to the litigant, the, the attorney's caseload, right? So not only does it have those sort of rippling effects for an attorney's career moving forward, but there's also clients that they represent. Mm -hmm. And they have their own interests in speedy trials for criminal defendants and, and other interests, right? So, yeah. I mean, and so there's, there's a lot of issues to tackle when you're talking about attorney wellness because a lot of attorneys, they don't want to go for help. They don't want to admit that they need help right. for various different reasons. So confidentiality is key, but also what are the rippling effects for somebody that raises their hand and says, I need help? Here's, here's the, uh, and here's, I'm going to add to that. I'm going to give you 30 plus years of experience and, and um, being around the block mm -hmm. with these things. The worst thing, and I'm, 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 hopefully I'm going to be proven wrong, is the judiciary, if it wants to do this, respectfully, respectfully, that's what we had to say when we're talking about the judiciary. We had to use the word respectfully. Judge O'Hallon used to tell me, whenever you use the word respectfully, I know something disrespectful is going to come out of your mouth. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm being real. Then the judiciary has to make a commitment that this bean counting that goes on and the pressure that's placed on the trial judges to move cases from one column to another column that they have to abandon that in some instances for the attorney that has the addiction or the mental health issue. Because uh, in the iteration of my career, I've seen judges who've been allowed to handle their calendars as they see fit. I mean, you're being appointed by the governor, you've been the, the consent of the Senate, and more and more as time went on, the judges were given less and less authority to run their courts and all they cared about is the time the cases that are just case disposition case disposition case disposition i knew that as the prosecutor the list would come out and the judges would be fighting and and then arguing and pressuring us with regard to resolving cases in a way that i didn't think was appropriate because they needed to get dispositions 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 and i think that that's going to come into confrontation with this issue bob it's not only relevant to the attorney that needs help and raises their hand but it's actually part of the problem of overwhelm for attorneys to start, 
right? I mean, first of all, we're back in court. So attorneys are traveling all over the place. And it was actually spoken about today. Like, let's use our resources a little bit better. Not everyone has to go and wait in a court. Oh, amen. Right? And also, too, um, there was an attorney that spoke up and said, well, sometimes even though something's on video, we have to be in other places, and they don't understand that we have to go from Somerset County to Bergen County to Warren County to Morris County at times, and you can't do it in the car. I mean, it's not professional to do it in your car, um, even when you pull over at a rest stop or something like that. So I think that there needs to be flexibility everywhere. It's not just when an attorney needs help and needs a pause on their caseload, but it's also we've learned so much from COVID and the way to appear digitally. There's no reason that we need to gather anymore for status conferences just to speak up and say what the discovery issues yeah. are and what motions need to be filed. I, honestly, it's a, I'm, I'm going to use the word. I know they don't mean it this way, but it's abusive. It is literally abusive. And please, if, if the judiciary were those who practiced in, in, in the private practice of law, remember what it's like to get into your car, to drive to the county, go into the garage, park your car, go through the magnetometers, get up to the courtroom. Many times it's not active or whatever. Wait an hour, two hours for something that's handled in two minutes that you could have easily done on a video. And then you have to be maybe two or three other places. I thought... I, I mean, I thought after COVID, we would have recognized that there are really leaner ways to do things mm -hmm. that would make more sense. But I also said to you, if and I mean this respectfully again, uh, if it's easier to do and makes sense, it's probably not going to happen. Sure enough, we went back to these, uh, in many instances, wasted and useless proceedings. Everyone complains about it. I don't understand why we continue to do it. But does that bring mental illness issues or whatever? Well, we're under a, we're a, a, under a lot of pressure yeah. to be in multiple places, especially when you're there and you're frustrated and you get there and you go through all that. You're sitting there and, and your case isn't being heard and you've got to be somewhere else. This doesn't have to be. Yeah, it's part of the problem. It's overwhelm. I mean, overwhelm. And, and I'll tell you what, this is another conversation and, and let's hit it over af after the break, but time management. And how that is critical because we only have a certain amount of hours in the day. And, and time management is so important to deal with stress and overwhelm and, and try to get through procrastination. Um, I'd like to hear some of your opinions on some of the things that you do that you've learned to manage your time and really try to minimize some of the overwhelm that a lot of attorneys experience. All right, you're listening to WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth with Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. We'll be right back. At the Bianchi Law Group, our team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and domestic violence cases. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today. All right. Welcome back to WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth. The Bob Bianchi Day Bruno doing a little bit different. We're not in our normal studio because we're having that redone. So we're in like what we call Studio B. What do we call it? Studio, studio B. B. Is it we do a lot of court appearances. For Bianchi and, and Bruno. And Bruno. The B's. The double Bs. Yep. Uh, yeah, but we're talking about the really important topic because I don't think that this is just related to law. Um, and, and Dave, we, I, I've always been very proud to work with you. Uh, as you know, I've always said as from prosecutor on, it's about the difference we're making in people's lives. In, in the end, you know, from my TEDx talk, it's about your deathbed confession. Can I say that I did as much as I could in the service of other people to make my life meaningful, that I could say job well done and, and be proud, as opposed to some of those people in the ambulance going back to when I was an EMT who used to were dying and talking about how their lives were meaningless and they had wished they had done this and they wished they had done that. I learned as a young 17-year-old listening to those people, I don't want that to be my life. So here we are when we start the law practice. I said, we just don't get excellent legal results. I mean, I'm not saying that's easy to do, but there's a way to do that. But are we making a difference in the lives of people? That's why we got trained by Dr. Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. That's why we did the Joyful Journey program. That's why you're interested in doing the wellness program with the Bar Association. It is such a key thing. But again, like I said, it's not just about lawyers. Uh, we've had people that have literally, Dave, am I, am I making it up that have said to us that they've not committed suicide? because of either a teaching we've given or a book we've given or a resource we've given. And man, that, that is just completely worth everything you possibly can think of. We touch everybody, you, me, 
Dr. Jerry over there, our producer, every single person, you know, from the person in the shop raid or the, the Uber driver can make a difference in the lives of other people. And we always try to emphasize that. So I love this part of what it is that we do at this law practice. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, giving our clients the gifts of imperfection mm -hmm. is what Bob's talking about. I mean, an excellent book written by Dr. Brene Brown. Um, talking about being imperfect, right? And, and really embracing these things of imperfection as to who we are. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's constant positive consumption. And we've talked about this recently. We had this exact conversation. I, I am now on this morning habit where literally it's up early and it's listening to Brendan Burchard's growth day and exercise and planning out the day with journaling and things like that. And I truly believe like this is a muscle that you need to exercise, this mindset, this positive consumption, because there are so many distractions mm. out there in the world. And you were talking about the deathbed confession, which was the theme of your TEDx talk. And the theme of my TEDx talk was reclaiming your time, following your inner counsel and reclaiming your time. And that was from a transformational night that I had in California, listening to Ed Milet, when we were scaling this business and learning everything about growing a business, I started to realize about how important mindset practices were. And really that's what's taken me to this spot where I am right now, journaling every morning, listening to positivity, listening to classical music in the morning, and eliminating the distractions and stuff that is on our phone, in Netflix, on TV, gambling, fantasy football, alcohol. There's so many other things out there that just just take the time away from us as opposed to what we need to be focusing on. And that's the things that are most important to you. Yeah, I think that the, the issue, at least in, in my studies, and I've studied a lot on these topics and in my experience in life, is that um, the lack of focus. Mm. Okay. And there's not that there's so, there's nothing wrong with watching a movie or there's nothing wrong with having a couple of drinks it's, not, it's it's when it's it's replacing something that you yearn for that could be better and one of the people that we spoke to sometimes it's the language it's really all the same thing that's why joyful journey the program i had the reason i called joyful wasn't like a pollyannic happy word i could have said happy journey or whatever joyfulness is a characteristic a way of being joyfulness whether things are good or bad mm -hmm. is always a state of mind there can always be a joyfulness regardless of what's going on around you you're able to overcome the tumult that may happen when something is occurring that you don't like not that you want it but you're able to deal with it. You're able to navigate it. And of course, staying away, the you asked me before, like what are the things? In the two evil worlds of the past and the future to the extent that you can. You want to stay as present as possible because I, uh, you know, I didn't, I breathed yesterday, but I don't breathe yesterday and I don't breathe tomorrow. I breathe today. I'm alive, not yesterday. I'm alive, not tomorrow. I'm alive today at this moment. And so when I think about all of the mental torture I've done to myself and I've seen other people do, it's usually about lamenting at something that happened in the past or a fear about something that's going to happen in the future. Now, I am not saying that you have to abandon the past and the future completely because I think that that is ill-advised advice. You can touch these things to get data points and then get back to the present moment to effectuate what? To effectuate what exactly? And that's what we've been working on a lot. I've been thinking about this a lot, Bob. I think procrastination is terrible in the sense that when you procrastinate something, you're often doing something that you shouldn't be doing. It's, a, it's something maybe that is not advancing the bees or is not it's just supposed to be done. But what it does is it pushes off the task that actually has to happen, right? So you're pushing that off and you're also taking from the future about time that you could be using for other priority tasks. So it's just pushing it, pushing it back. So it's like probably one of the things that people who are struggling with time management, they do the most, and that is procrastinate. So many things to talk about, mm. and it really does all talk, relate to attorney wellness, but, but a lot of other professions oh. and people are dealing with these same issues. Absolutely. I mean, we, um, we go back to an unexamined life is not worth living. 
right? When, when I was prosecutor and I was talking to you guys about how to try a case, or in my opinion, how to try a case, and you remember I played for you guys Pavarotti's Nessun Dorma that was spoken in Italian. And n only one person spoke Italian that was in that room, told them not to speak, and we asked the lawyers, what, what specifically about this? And we watched this performance. Give me an adjective to describe. You were there for that, right? I when you I know I've delivered done it that you. to me. It was me and Matt Nunn. You and Matt Nunn. I'll, I your, gave you a private lesson. Yeah, literally, we were preparing for um, attempted murder trial that we were trying. Matt and I went to Bob for trial prep, and we start listening to music. <laughs> but this is what he saw. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and so we, we can segue into that. So the, I said, "The mystics. You want to learn how to try the case here?" And so, and the point was. He was, Pavarotti, communicating in a way beyond his words. You didn't understand his words. The intonation, mm -hmm. the manner in which he expressed his voice. There's so many ways to communicate. You can tell it was coming from his heart, from his soul, in the way his presentation was occurring. And I was saying to Matt and to Dave and to all my assistant prosecutors and when we've gone through this exercise that you've got to learn to do that as a trial lawyer in the courtroom. And a lot of that is believing in yourself, believing in your case, not being afraid to make a mistake. And the difference between, and this is what I do, Dave and those guys, Matt Nunn laughs about it to this day, and I'm sure we'll tag him in, in, in this video, the difference between the mechanics and the mystics. The mechanics is doing the thing step by step, piece by piece. Yeah, can you put it together? Sure. But there's a difference between that and the mystics. And there's a difference between singing Nessun Dorma like I would sing it, <laughs> as opposed to the way Pavarotti sings it. And can we live our lives, no matter what they are, no matter what our goals are, no matter what your profession is, what your career, in the way Pavarotti sang Nessun Dorma so that at the end of the song or the end of your life, you, you know, it, it will be a beautiful thing. It's, that's, I don't know, to me it's kind of fascinating. No, it, it absolutely <laughs> is, you know, and, and I, I have a, an experience that you taught me too in the courtroom, very similar in a sense that I, I had a case where I had a knife, <laughs> this large knife that was in question that was used to stab somebody. And I identified it in the courtroom. I had it in a box. I brought it to the witness. I identified it. I moved it into evidence and I put it back in the box. Ouch. And at the, at the break, Bob grabs me. He's like, dude, this was your opportunity. Get that thing out. Get it out. Let them see it. Let them pass it around if you could. You know, whatever, right? Because there's much more to the systematic admission of the evidence. It's really you're in front of a jury. You're there to persuade. And certainly using that object, which was massive. It was a large knife. And I learned a lot from that. And that's essentially what we're talking about here is not just systematic. Use the mystics. Bring mm. it to life. Put air into it, you know? So um, certainly a good example. Yes. Yeah, so listen, I know we got to wrap up, but uh, I just wanted to touch one, one last thing. I, I mean, I love what we're doing here. And we're going to probably start doing this in a different format, but we've also started a CLE company, BLG CLE, uh, Continuing Legal Education Credits. And this is right up our queue too, Dave. Um, I, I, I've been saying for a long time, and I know you agree, to be able to give this experience, this knowledge in the real legal world in a practical way, I mean, I go to a lot of lectures. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're good, right? Yeah. Certified criminal trial lawyers. But they're, they're, they don't always scratch the itch of what it is I need to know in the real nuts and bolts way about how to practice law. Because like we're talking about with mindset, you can go to law school and you can pass the bar, okay? But that does not deal with the day in and day out stuff. For example, let's, let's tie it all together. Wellness. Well, it doesn't deal with the judge that jumps down your throat. Because you make a, you know, they're having a bad day, or the the client who is difficult, or an adversary who's being disrespectful. There's a lot of tension in the adversarial process of what it is that we do. But these CLEs is another venue, not just mindset that we're doing here with this show, mm. where we're able to take that practical knowledge and we've identified all the courses that we wish we had, and we're going to put it together in a package for CLE, Dave. I'm psyched. Me too. 
it's fun too because we have the technology to do it you guys see it you guys see us on the long crime network on court tv on fox news cnn msnbc we have the cameras we have the studios we're like primed and ready to do it not only that we're also speaking on behalf of the state bar association and njaj so we had a call this morning about this because we filmed our our first one last week with christina hall the retired director of the appellate division central research unit um and we filmed it we're just producing it right now but bob the ability to take the conversations that we have from our morning huddles with our team of former prosecutors i just wish that everyone could just listen one day it can't happen because of all the confidentiality but what it is is seven four six former prosecutors and christina the director former director our support staff our paralegals we're talking about the rules of evidence we're talking about case law we're talking about strategies and literally what we're doing now is we're putting things that we talk about in the huddle on the agenda for the blg cla this is how it started attorney wellness too we're, we're going to be doing some blg cle's on attorney wellness to the extent that they can get approved because this is important it's it's time management. It's how do you run a business? It's client communication. And then fundamentally, rules of evidence, procedure, how to try a case, how to cross examine, open, close. These are things that are our specialty, and we cannot wait to start laying it in into uh, BLGCLA. All right, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, R Bianchi ESQ, D Bruno ESQ. And just to give you an example of Twitter. what you. Does we still do Twitter? Yeah, we still do Twitter. Whatever. <laughs> Twitter's an X. Uh, LinkedIn, you know, we're all over. But here's my post for today, Dave. It, it was in the gym. And I even put music on it, so I, I know you'd be impressed. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Yeah. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're it's right. Essentially, yeah. I mean, whatever you're thinking is going to come to fruition, right? I mean, look, there's so many other variables in external circumstances. But there's one thing that you can control always and that is how you're thinking about things mm. so i'll tell you what i am super excited i'm not only super excited about this particular uh podcast but also blg cle the bianchi law group and our criminal defense practice and we got a lot of things going on and, and it's just such a exciting time Peace. Thanks for watching WMTR Radio. It's nothing but the truth. Bobby Bianca Dave Bruder every Saturday at 9.30 on the radio. Of course, join us ahead of time on LinkedIn and Instagram with regard to our, you know, save the date, accept it. So it'll go right on your device in the podcast, Dave. So it's nothing but the truth podcast.com. We have a brand new website. If you haven't seen it already, it features all of our great guests. Also, we are now streaming live on Saturday mornings with the radio show on WMTR. You can listen to it on the radio or you can watch the interviews now on LinkedIn, YouTube and Facebook. LinkedIn for LinkedIn, though, we have an event. So we're posting that we're promoting it. You're seeing the comments and you could register for the event so that you're in the room ready to rock 930 on Saturday morning. Peace. Peace. We're the Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys. But here's the thing. He put himself in a box when he said... My Relied on by CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Law and Crime, and news leaders across the country for our criminal defense expertise. In a search warrant, you have to have probable cause that a crime's been committed and there's evidence in a particular place. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi.